Good morning, everyone. I'd like, I'd like to welcome you to Harmony and worship services that we can worship our great God that loves us dearly. And so, for our pastoral reading is in page. Excuse me. I got my head of myself. The announcements are in the bulletin. As far as is there any that needs that's not covered in the bulletin? So, there, if you look all through the page there, you'll find this. So, the pastoral reading is page six, number 692, Psalms 16. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. I said to the Lord, you are my Lord, and apart from you I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are gracious, glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those will increase who run after other gods. I will not pour out their liberties of blood or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you have assigned me my position my portion and my cup. You have made me lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest securely. Because you have not abandoned me to the grave, nor will you let your holy ones see decay. You have made me known to you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. So, again. Glad to see everybody here this morning, and even Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad. I'm glad we, we won't have a, a funeral for him. I'm really glad about that. I had one yesterday morning. Um, so we're thankful for that, thankful for everybody who's here, and let's go to the Lord in prayer, let us pray. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, we thank you for all your blessings, uh, that you watch over us, and that you protect us, and Lord, that, that you are with us, and guide us, and direct us, and we thank you for uh, those who are sick, we ask that you would bless them in a special way. Uh, your healing mercies be upon them. Uh, be with those who couldn't make it today. Be with those who may not think it's important to be at church, um, that you would touch their hearts and lives by your Holy Spirit, that they would come back to church, um, that they would want to know more about you, and uh, they, that they would want to be guided by your Holy Spirit in their lives. Um, that uh, we thank you that you are here, that you are present, uh, and that your Holy Spirit dwells within us and guides us and directs us and helps us. For we thank you for all that you've given us in many blessings. Well, we thank you and praise you and ask these prayers through Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, that was very good. Everybody alive yet? Yeah. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. Our scripture lesson today is taken from John uh, chapter 7, verse 37 to 39, and 14, verse 16 to 17. On the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. 
He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. But this he spoke concerning the Spirit, whom those believing in him would receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will, and will be in you. May God have his blessings upon you and these his words. Amen. When I was preparing to go to China, uh, I, in my heart, I said, "What's what's going to happen when I get to China?" Uh, China was a communist country. Um, what's what's going to happen? Uh, so I was in South Korea at that time, and then I, I headed to China. When I got to China, the director of of the Communist Party of the school, he met me at the airport, and he took me to my apartment. And then he says to me, he says, tomorrow I will take you to the police station. And I said, oh, oh okay, I'm already in trouble. <laughs> All right. And, and the next day we did go to the police station, and the police station went through the rules, okay? And I think they knew that I was, because of my Master of Divinity degree, they kind of figured that you know, he might be religious or something. <laughs> So the police officer said he, he, he went down some of the laws pertaining to uh, foreigners, especially uh, evangelism. A uh, foreigner cannot evangelize in China. Okay, that was one thing that he told me. And then I asked him, I says, uh, can I, can I t teach my students about American culture? You know, our ways of life and things like that. And he, and he said, yeah, but don't overdo it. You know, I, you know, don't overdo it. So I said, okay, good. So when I, when we got back to the campus, uh, my first school was in a big campus. We had like 26,000 students. And since I was new to China, I didn't know a whole lot, you know, where to go, whatever. So I met three young women, they were in their third year of school. And at that school, a lot of, a lot of students uh, go just three years. I don't know what degree they get, but they only go three years. And this was more of a technical college where the students would go out into, uh, the English majors would, would have jobs uh, translating Chinese to English. Uh, they may get a job with a business who would do business with Americans or with English speaking people and they would translate. Or they would go into the tourist business uh, where they would meet uh, and people, take them on tours, speak in English. So that was, that was what that school was all about. And I met the three young women and uh, they came up to me and they said, uh, we will help you, okay? And they said, we will show you around. Uh, we will take you to the stores. Whatever help you need, uh, we, will, we will do that as long as we have the time. Okay, so they became my good friends and we went, uh, they showed me around. They took me to uh, different stores. Um, they helped me uh, translate if I, if I needed somebody to translate. Uh, and they would help me at that. And I was very thankful for them, for their help, okay? Uh, and we became real good friends. Uh, two of them, later on, three or four years, got married, and then the other one got married a couple more years later. Uh, the two had babies in October, the same October, they had those girls. And I told them, I'll come and visit them, and I went and visited them, um, 
because they were my friends. And then, uh, and they're still my friends. And the one had a little boy after she had a little girl. And uh, we still communicate, the one we still communicate. And she teaches them English, okay? And whenever they send me a message uh, through WeChat, they have something through WeChat, and they will call me Grandfather Mark. Okay, I'm <laughs> Grandfather Mark, okay? So I'm real pleased for number one, they helped me uh, when I got to China, okay? Uh, in our scripture lesson, Jesus says that uh, we will receive all those who believe in Jesus that uh, he will give the Holy Spirit. And it says, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Okay, so we have the assurance of the Holy Spirit for all those who believe. Um, and as, as we go through life and as we experience difficulties, uh, we, turn to, we turn to God uh, for, for our needs. We, we have needs. Um, and so we, we have the hope that God hears our prayers uh, and that he will, in some ways, uh, grant those prayers. It may it may not be immediately, but sooner or later he may he may fulfill our prayers. Um, and when I well when I minister to the people in China, and like I says, uh, when I was a missionary in, in Colombia, we could do about everything. We could have services outside in churches. Um, uh, in, in schools, uh, when I got to China, like I said, when the, when the police officer said you can't evangelize people, then I had to go to the Lord in prayer. What do you want me to do, Lord? And he said, show them love. I think I shared this. But he says, show them love, and uh, they will listen. You know. And, and what I did was invite, the, invite them to my apartment for dinner. And they, they loved to come over and, and have dinner with me. Um, so I had to depend on the Holy Spirit to, to reach out to those students in China, even though it was against the law for me to evangelize, but the Lord showed me through the Holy Spirit, do this and you'll be effective, okay. Um, I don't know how many people were saved or are saved, um, but when we all get to heaven, when we all get to heaven, we will see all those people whom we have touched, whom we have witnessed to, uh, and I can see a lot of those people, there's a lot of Chinese people coming up to me in heaven and thanking me for being there. And that's what I think the, the scripture lesson is about that we are thankful that we have the Holy Spirit in us, and that God directs us in our lives, um, that uh, we could tell others about the saving knowledge of Jesus. The next part, um, when uh, I'm, I was brought up, or I was ordained in a Southern Baptist church, okay, when I went, to, when I went before the ordination council, the first question they asked, "Can you lose your salvation? Can you lose your salvation? Hmm? Can you can you lose your salvation? That's the question." And I kept thinking about, and of course the answer is, "No, you can't lose your salvation." But then I keep thinking to myself, if a person Except Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and he and he is baptized, she's baptized, 
Okay, she's welcomed into the life of the church. Okay, in the Baptist faith, we have discipleship training. And so they would go through discipleship training. Uh, they would be taught about the Bible, about what Jesus did, and, and the promise of the Holy Spirit. Um, and it says, uh, let's go and turn to Ephesians, if you want to turn to Ephesians. I'm going to share a couple Bible verses here. Ephesians 1, 13. In him you were, yeah. Chapter 1, verse 13. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And we go to Ephesians 4, 30. Same, same book. Ephesians 4, 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Okay, so in both of these, we see the word sealed. Okay, we are sealed. Okay, what does that mean? In the Old Testament, New Testament, the leaders or the kings, um, when they wrote a letter or an edict or law, they would seal the letter using their signet ring. If you know, they had these big signet rings and then they would put the, with the wax on the letter, law, whatever, and then they would seal it with their signet ring, yes. And it would make it official, okay? It would make it official. And so when that letter is taken to the uh, people around the area, they knew that it was official. This is an official letter. So that he sealed it. The kings would seal it. This is official. Okay. So God says, okay, we're going to seal your salvation. Okay. It's official. Who can take away, who can take away that salvation? Who can take away that seal? Can Satan? No. no, Satan can't take that away. Satan tries, he will try, and he will try, and he will try to take away the seal, but God sealed him up. He says, you can't take it. You can't take it away. Satan doesn't have the authority to take it away. You have the authority over Satan. And I keep saying that over and over again. You have the authority over Satan. He can't take that seal away. How about you? How about you? Can you take that seal away? Yes. How do you do that? Denounce it. Denounce it. You can denounce it. You can you can turn away from God. You can well I'll give you an example. Okay, let me give you an example. Try to make this easy. Let's say you you were you went before the you went before the church. Uh, you you dedicate your life to Christ. You say you see Christ as my Lord and Savior. You are baptized and welcomed into the life of the church. All right, then okay, you go to church for a little while and then you start backsliding. Okay, some of us you know there are some we we actually do not stop sinning after we are saved. Unless we join a convent or something like that, we are well, all going to join a convent, pray 20 hours a day, fast, fast the other four hours a day, we're good, okay? We're all going to join a convent, we're going to pray. Maybe then we will, we will stop sinning. But uh, in our nature, we do sin. But we have the Holy Spirit, and you know, we the Holy Spirit... Uh, and, and, the, and the Holy Spirit, one of the things the Holy Spirit does for us is to convict us of our sin. Now, if a person is not convicted of their sin and, and keeps sinning, is the person saved? Okay. Uh, is the person saved? So we take that uh, situation, uh, the person leaves the church, 
maybe doesn't come back uh, and and is that person saved uh, that's the difference between him and the Lord but, but the Lord knows okay but if we who are filled with the Holy Spirit let's turn one more time here to Matthew chapter 7 we're going to go to Matthew chapter 7 Verses 21 through 23. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you, Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. You see that? Those who practice lawlessness. Um, we who are saved, should we practice lawlessness? In other words, we, should we sin against God, against his Ten Commandments, uh, against uh, our brothers and sisters in the church? Should we sin against them? And the Lord says... If you practice lawlessness, you're not going to enter the kingdom of heaven, okay? Um, and these people probably aren't filled with the Holy Spirit in the first place. And, and this is what we, this is our good discussion in the Baptist church. You know, maybe these people weren't filled with the Holy Spirit. Maybe, they, maybe their confession of faith wasn't genuine. Um, you know, so we, we discuss that quite a bit. Um, so, one more, one more verse here. Well, several verses. And John, we go back to John chapter 16. Let's all go back to John chapter 16. And what the Holy Spirit does for us. He's our helper. So let's go back to John chapter 16. Verses 8 through 11. And, we, and when he has come, that's the Holy Spirit, he will convict us. He will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they do not believe in him. Or believe in, yeah. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you will see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. So the first thing the Holy Spirit does, he will convict the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. The problem here is, he's talking about believers. So when we look around, how many unbelievers are there? They don't know if they're sinning, do they? They don't know what sin is. But they continue to do that. You understand that. If they do not know what sin is, they will continue to sin. But they don't understand what sin is because they don't believe in the Bible. Or, okay. But the Holy Spirit convicts us, believers, of our sin. Okay. And when we sin, we should ask the Lord to forgive our sins, which he is faithful to do, and he will forgive our sins. Okay, but the world doesn't understand that. And, uh, and he will convict us of our righteousness. He will, yeah, convict in of righteousness and of judgment. Okay, and also he will bless us when we do things right. Um, and also he puts in our hearts, uh, are we, are we going to be judged when we die? When we die, are we going to be judged? And uh, Paul writes that we all, we will all go before the judgment seat of Christ. But what does that mean? Okay. 
We are under grace, not under the law. Are we under judgment or under the law? And I think as we talk about this, that we look at our our rewards when we get to heaven. And and that is, I think, what the Lord's saying. Okay, when we all go to heaven, uh, we will go before him and he will give us our rewards of what we did on earth, okay, of what we've done for him. Uh, he will reward us at that time. And our life, and, and this is what I believe, is our life will will be shown uh, to us, and when we see, we will see our sins, uh, we will see what we did uh, to disobey God, but all those sins are washed away by the blood of the Lamb. So, of course, when we get to heaven, you know, we will see our life being brought back, shown to us, but the Lord will forgive us because of what he did on the cross. He shed his blood for us that we that our sins are forgiven. And then he will reward us. He says, you know, this is what you've done on earth. This is what you've done for me. And then we will give it our rewards in heaven. Okay? Some will have more rewards than others. But we will all make it. Okay? We will all make it. Uh, and whatever reward we get we will all be happy when we get there. At least we're going to heaven and not to the other place. You don't want to go to the other place. You don't want to go to the other place. But we shall all go to heaven uh, and look forward to that. Um, and, we all, and we have our helper our helper is the Holy Spirit who guides us and directs us in our life. Uh, we should depend on him. Uh, and like I said, with, uh, and I look back and, and, and I'm thankful for, for all the people who've helped me. Uh, when I got to China, those, those young women who helped me. And if you look back in your life, uh, you know, little things that, that, were little miracles maybe that uh, the Lord has has granted us. Um, maybe you, I think everyone here would be thankful for what the Lord has done in your life, in my life, in the future. Um, I'm thankful uh, for the opportunities that I the Lord granted me in the mission field to, to meet all those people in Colombia and in China and South Korea. Um, but we should always depend on the Holy Spirit as our guide, as our helper. Um, he is with us and he will be with us forever. Um, he has sealed us. Nobody can break that seal. Not even Satan. Satan can't break that seal. But we should live a life in righteousness and in faith towards God in whom we believe. And, and we thank you. Let's go to Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are present, that you've given us your Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us in our lives. We ask um, if anybody here has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that you would take this time uh, and, and thank the Lord for, for him, for giving his life for us, for dying on the cross and shed his blood for us. So we thank you and give you the praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Next week we will look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so May the love and peace of Jesus Christ be with you. May he bless you, watch over you. May his countenance upon you give you peace. Now and forevermore. Amen.